Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Manor at Beyond the Veil Worship Center. Hallelujah. Come on in and fellowship with us this morning. I ask that you will hit the share button and the like button so that the gospel can be shared across our social media platforms. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. Come on in, glory to God. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Thank you, Father. First, I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life and who is my everything. Then I also want to honor my apostle, my pastor, my spiritual mother, Dr. Wanda J. Sisko, for allowing me this opportunity to share the word of God with us today. To honor my husband and my three daughters who have been praying and supporting me as I was preparing and stuttering for this assignment today. Now that I have removed all the formalities out of the way, let us go before the throne of the Lord. Father, it's your servant again coming to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Now, Master, I ask and pray that you will put me in the back seat so that I can also hear and receive this word. But you take over, O oh God, and share with us the message that you will have for us. Touch our ear gates, God, and touch our hearts, God. Allow every word that is spoken today, allow it like David, be hidden in our hearts so that we may not sin against you, Father. Lord, I thank you, I praise you, I bless you, I love you. It's in your holy and righteous Son, King Jesus' name, will I ever pray. Amen. So this morning, I want to do something a little different. My task is to give you what the Holy Spirit gave me. And if you only allow me a few minutes, I'll be out of your way. I want to talk about or talk from the subject, knowing your kingdom assignment. Knowing your kingdom assignment. I have a series of questions I would like to ask you regarding your kingdom assignment. I am going to speak from a biblical and a practical perspective. Do you know or do you believe God has given you an assignment. If so, what is it? Are you prepared or preparing for it? If so, what, in what ways are you preparing? The Holy Spirit had me to look at several different characters in the Bible and looking at their kingdom assignment. First was Moses. God created Moses to lead the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. In Exodus 3 and 10, it says, Come now, therefore, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Then there was Joshua. Joshua Joshua was created to lead the people of Israel across the river into the promised land. Joshua's assignment was to take over after Moses. The mantle was passed. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord had spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister saying Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise and go to this Jordan and all the people unto the land which I will give to them even to the children of Israel and then there was Solomon Solomon was created to build the Lord's temple in 2nd Samuel chapter 7 verses 12 through 13 it says, and when your days be filled and you are asleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. 
He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And in 1 Kings chapter 6 and 14 says, So Solomon built the temple and finished it. Jeremiah was created to be a prophet. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. John the Baptist had an assignment. He was created, John the Baptist was created on the earth to be a voice in the wilderness to prepare the way for Jesus. Matthew 3, 1 and 2 says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Just a few more. Esther, who was chosen to be a queen for such a time to save her people from extinction. Nehemiah was burdened with the task of rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Noah was given the assignment to build the ark, and the apostle Paul was to carry out the great commission to all the nations and spreading the gospel, which is also our assignment. So here are a few things we must all realize and understand the importance of the assignment, who they affect, how we should prepare ourselves for them, and why do we do them in the first place. So this pointed me to 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and 11, and this is the NIV version, and it reads, Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in the heaven and the earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. When we look back at each one of those stories, these are the facts I would like to present before you. Moses did lead the people out of Egypt. Joshua successfully led them into the promised land. Solomon built the temple of the Lord. Jeremiah prophesied to nations. And John the Baptist preached repentance to prepare the way before Jesus. And the Apostle Paul kept the faith and finished the race at all cost. Paul said in 2 Timothy, and this is the message version, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, I, Paul, am on a special assignment for Christ, carrying out God's plan laid out in the message of life by Jesus. We see in all these successful, completed assignments, God's plan prevailed. And I am now reminded of a story that my sister called me on on just yesterday. And she shared with me that as she was going to work, because she doesn't have to go in until late morning, and she wanted to stop and get her something to eat. And as she was traveling, she, she saw a particular uh, bakery, and it was a bakery she had never been to, but she decided and felt led to go to this bakery. And she went in there, and she grabbed her food, and as she was coming out, there were several beggars that were outside. And the first gentleman she passed asked if she had some spare change, and she said, I'm sorry, I don't. And as she proceeded to her vehicle, there was another man who stopped and asked her the same question, excuse me, ma'am, can you spare some change? And she said, I'm sorry, sir, I sure can't. And as she was walking back to her vehicle, there was a heaviness of the Holy Spirit that fell on her concerning that man. So when she got to her car, she looked through her purse. She said she had maybe about 2 or $3. 
And then she started to look through her car because she was wondering if she had some more money tucked somewhere or some change. As she collected everything she had, she had a little over six dollars. And she said, okay, I have all this change. I need to put it in something. So she began to look around her car and she saw a Pepco bill. When she said that to me, I instantly began to realize what Pepco represents, power. So she put the $6 and some change in the envelope. She turned back around, she got out the car, and she walked over to the man and she said, here, sir, this is all I have. I wish I had more. And he began to share with her. He said, I, I'm working, but after I pay my bills, I only have $20 for the next two weeks to get me through. And I've exhausted my $20, and I'm hungry. So she said, you know what? This is all I have, but tomorrow I'm going to stop by and I'm going to make sure I take care of you. As she was walking back to the car, the Spirit of God pressed on her. So she went to the ATM, and she went and got a few hundred dollars out. But not only that, when she came back, she saw the other gentleman who first asked her. And she saw the gentleman who she was getting the money for, so she felt convicted. So she said, let me take $20 out of this to give to him because I don't want him to see me give this man this and not give him something when he asked. But as the Lord orchestrates all things, there was a Metro bus that pulled up and actually blocked the view of the first gentleman. So when she pulled up and got out the car, she was just amazed because what God instructed her to do was for the second gentleman. So she got out of the car, she put the money in another envelope, and she walked over to him and she said, Sir, don't open this up right now, but I put a little extra in there for you. And at that moment, the guy begins to weep. And he said, can I pray for you? <laughs> and my sister said, not only did he pray for me, but he prayed down the bloodlines of my family. That was an assignment. That was a kingdom assignment orchestrated just for her. So I now want to look at and talk about any assignment God gives us is to be taken seriously and with confidence to trust that it is he that will lead and guide us by the Holy Spirit, no matter how it looks or how it turns out in our eyes, because God's plan never fails. Proverbs chapter 3 Verses 5 and 6 is very familiar. But the word of God says, trust in the Lord. And what I love about this scripture as it relates to kingdom assignment, it doesn't say trust in Tanise. As we move forward in understanding our kingdom assignment, we must, it is imperative that we trust in the Lord. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some, not part, not how you feel or what you think. Lean not to your own understanding. Denise, don't try to figure it out. In all your ways, not part, not some, when it's convenient, all your ways acknowledge him and let him not me, let him direct thy path. So when God gives his assignment, the key is to follow his divine provisions and stay close to him through prayer and his word. This reminds me of the story of Hannah. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 1, Elkanan had two wives. It was custom during that time. You can't try to do that now. <laughs> His two wives' names was Hannah and Paniah. Pananiah. Hannah's womb was closed, and she was barren and couldn't bear children. But she was taunted, mocked by Pananiah, because she could give birth. Her husband loved Hannah more than anything. She felt unfulfilled because her desire was to give birth. The Bible says Hananiah got up one morning, went to Shiloh to the temple to pray. Sitting at the entrance of the doorway was Eli the priest. As Hananiah started praying, she wept, but it wasn't her weeping that got God's attention. As Hananiah began to pray, there was a shift that happened. The shift in her prayer was that she began to pray not only for her own desire, but she began to pray according to her assignment. In her prayer, she began to offer the very thing that she asked God for, offered it back to God. Hebrews 11 says, noun faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence not seen. I believe that when Hannah began to pray and as she began to offer the thing that she craved and desired so much back to God, God opened her womb. And I believe with some of us in our assignments, the, why, the reason why some things are clogged up or have not been released, because we have not offered that thing back to God. How many times have we received instructions from God, but then it became more about self and not God? If our assignments are not focused on giving God the glory, he's not going to release it. If when we begin to move in directions and operate in our kingdom assignment, but it becomes more of self-gratification instead of glory unto God, that stream, like her womb, is going to dry up. How many of us are praying for new jobs? But God's not going to release it until you go back and pray and ask him to release the job for his glory. How many of us are looking for husbands, but we have not prayed and asked God to sanctify it so that that marriage can be used for his glory? How many of us who want children, how many of us want businesses, but our prayers have been selfish? Because in most cases, when we go to God, we ask God for what we want and how it's going to impact our life. But God is looking for us like Hannah, to offer back to him the very thing that we desire from him. Glory to his name. God has already provided us with what we need to complete the task to any assignment. It's through him that we can tap into the gifts and measures of faith he has graciously given us through his Holy Spirit. Romans 12 and 3 states, And he dealt to every man a measure of faith. So you mean to tell me for every assignment, God, that you have released unto me, you've already placed it within me to accomplish it. He said he has dealt every man a measure so whatever it is God has assigned you to, he's given you the provisions of faith within us to activate it. Glory to your name, God. Ephesians 4 and 7 says, unto everyone, that doesn't exclude anybody, 
who's in Christ. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So as we are children of the Most High God, he's given us a measure of faith, and he's also given us a measure of the gift within him. So in order for us to operate in what our God-given kingdom assignment is, we must tap into him for him to manifest that within us. If you go through the genealogy of Jesus through Matthew chapter 1, you'll see that every assignment is generational. So as we look at our assignments and we look at the effects of our assignments and even to the point in our own selfishness within our assignments, it's generational. The assignments that God has placed on us today is going to affect our generations down the road. Okay, so let us put this in perspective. Assignments is nothing new. We have assignments on our job, in our homes, with our children, and even our walk with God. But think about it. All assignments comes with instructions. It's only when we don't follow them do we find ourselves wasting time, energy, and sometimes money because we didn't follow the instructions and the directions that were given. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As we're looking to explore and understand our kingdom assignment, it is impossible to do it without first seeking God. It is God who provides us with the assignment. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 1 and 6, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ arrives. So as we look at our kingdom assignment, we understand our kingdom assignment, it's always important for us to put things in perspective when we look at what that assignment looks like. If it doesn't bring God Glory is not a kingdom assignment. I'm going to say that again. If it doesn't bring God glory, it's not a kingdom assignment. I recall a time when I brought a bookcase and, you know, me being independent, and this is before my husband now, he does all of that stuff. But I bought a bookcase and I had to put it together. And because it gave the appearance of being easy to put together, me, because I think, you know, I can do this, as we all do, I didn't follow the instructions. Because it looked simple. It wasn't a very big bookcase. So as I pulled things out of the box and I saw the picture on the front of the box, I began to size up the shelves, and it had you know, the little uh, spokes with the glue, and I said, I can do this. And when I was 80% completed, I realized, <laughs> glory to God, that there were so many missteps because I had the instructions, but because I thought I knew what I was doing, it cost me time, money, yeah. and effort. Yeah. And I implore you today that as you begin to seek the face of God, to seek what your kingdom assignment is, that you have that piece of paper, that you have the word of God, 
and that you begin to pray and ask the Lord, what were you created for? And allow him to answer that for you. It's very interesting because my daughter asked me yesterday as she saw me uh, preparing. And I bless God for my family because, you know, I'm like, leave me alone. Let me focus. And she came into the office last night and she said, Mommy, um, am I going to do what you doing? And I said, that is not my assignment to tell you what God is calling you to do. I said, you have to pray and ask God, what is your assignment? What were you created to do? And that's where we get the direction. That's where we get the plan. That's where we get the understanding because, again, the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. Because if it's up to, ne to Denise, you know, I would come up with a whole bunch of things. But God won't be in any of it. And it won't be successful. So as we enter into this new season of fulfilling our God-ordained assignment, don't forget to pray. Listen to his voice voice and watch for direction. Be diligent in working toward your assignment and make sure you give him all the glory when it's done. Yes. So we all, like the Apostle Paul, can hear these famous words in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So as we have went through a series of questions, scriptures, understanding of our kingdom assignment, here is where I want to create an environment or an opportunity for those that have heard me speak but have no idea of what I'm talking about. All of this means nothing if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I can hear in my spirit someone through the airways asking, how can I do that? I want to walk you through the process. First, we must agree. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned, and fallen short of the glory of God. We must know in Romans 6 and 23, the A clause says, for the wages of sin is death. We must believe, Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love toward us in that which we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then lastly, we must receive. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord is Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And I just want to finish with verse 13 says, For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what I love about that verse, it excludes everything that we think that comes between us and God. So you mean to tell me I murdered somebody and he will accept me? Yes. You mean to tell me I committed adultery? Yes. He will save you. You mean to tell me I stole things? I spoke evil against people? God still will save me? Yes. So at this time, I ask that you will repeat after me with this prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit to you that I am a sinner and need your salvation. 
I believe that Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead with all power in his hands. Come into my heart and be my Savior and Lord. I'm asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you desire prayer or to be a part of the Beyond the Veil Ministries, at the bottom of the screen, you should see the information scrolling. Send us a message, add your name to the chat, and one of the ministers on the staff will reach out to you. Also scrolling is a way to pay your tithes and offering. The book of Malachi says that we are to pay our tithes. It is a biblical principle that God requires of us. And if for those, if you've been blessed by this message and you want to sow a seed into this ministry, the information is also scrolling at the bottom of the screen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning for Beyond the Veil Sunday Morning Manna. We love you. God bless you. And we are praying for you. Amen. <laughs>